Hey guys, I'm Dr. Dodd. I want to thank you guys for taking this time. We are doing an emergency uh, workshop today on lasting immunity with the coronavirus almost here. This is the most important time to have a strong immune system. You know, I really like what the government's doing on uh, separating everybody and, and, and trying to minimize the, the crowds and the effects of the, the spreading of it. I think that's a wonderful plan uh, to slow it down, but unfortunately it's not going to stop it. And eventually we're pretty much all going to be exposed to this coronavirus at some point and all we're left with is our own immune system. So today we're going to talk about how we can strengthen our immune system so we're prepared when it comes because it's definitely coming. And so one of the things we've learned is that our immune system works nicely when everything's together. The, the key is infection prevention and when our, when our body is working properly the immune system identifies the threats, including all viruses, bacteria, and parasites, and distinguishes them from the healthy tissues, and we do not get sick. And by the way, when, when our immune system doesn't have enough power to kill the infection ourselves, your body will send out the nuclear arms, and we call that fever. And fever is one of the best ways to heal an infection, uh, especially one that's been chronic. So fever is a common sign of illness and disease, and it's shortened by the letting the, uh, uh, a safe fever run its course. So that means when you have a fever, that's a sign your body is sending out the nuclear weapons to heal you. It's a good thing. You want to make sure you're drinking plenty of fluid during the fever. You don't want to ever get dehydrated during a fever. Now, fever typically uh, will, you know, and by the way, coughing is also a good sign. It means you're getting rid of toxins. Sneezing is a good sign. Those things means your body's getting rid of bad things. So you don't want to suppress the cough. There's too many toxins in the cough suppressant. You want to let that uh, cough run its course. You want, to, you want to always let the sneeze run it. Don't ever sneeze on anybody else, but you always want to sneeze. You don't want to hold that sneeze in, okay? Now, um, when you have a fever and uh, fevers, get, you know, people like to reduce the fever, but if that fever is 102 or below, let the fever run its course. Uh, once it gets up to 103, they do recommend that you, uh, you should see a doctor or, or take some kind of fever reducing uh, method there, but, but that's only after three days. So majority of fevers don't last that long anyway, so let the fever run its course. Most of the time, it's gonna help your body heal itself, okay? So uh, if you have a fever of uh, three days, more than 103, you can go, and then, it, and then when you have 104 or above, then that's when you really need to go see the doctor, okay? So under most circumstances, let the fever run its course, but drink plenty of fluids. Everybody got that? Next, we're gonna talk about coughing. And we talked about how coughing, um, we don't wanna suppress that cough because that's one of the ways the body gets rid of the toxins. Um, and think about this, it says, coughing is good and brings the mucus up and out of the lungs and the respiratory tract. Corona's are getting the lungs, guys. So we wanna make sure our lungs are nice and strong. So coughing also agitates the mucus and prevents the bacteria from developing their defense uh, biofilm and creating a huge colony of pus-filled goo. And you know this was done by pediatrician Roy um, out of Embry uh, Medical School. It says cough, cough, um, coughs caused by virus can last up to three weeks. Antibiotics will not clear it up any faster. So as soon as you have a cough, you're gonna take cough suppressant medication. You don't wanna do that. And you don't wanna take the antibiotics because they're only for bacteria infection. And remember, this is a virus we're dealing with. Most of these colds and coughs and flus are viruses anyway. So, and remember, the antibiotic kills the good bacteria, which is gonna weaken your immune system down the road. Now, also, we wanna make sure that we don't take the decongestant medications. They're loaded with all kinds of toxins, and I'll go on that in detail in just a minute. Remember the germ theories, what everybody's basing everything on there. You're never going to avoid all the germs. And think about this. You know, so you got two people working at the same office, and yet one's, one's sick all the time and one's not sick. And they're both exposed to the same germs, right? So we can never judge it by uh, our, how we're feeling there. And I think that the, the Mosh and Dasha, the twins from the 1950s, really explains this. They've got the same uh, blood supply. They've got separate nerve supply. And then one... Uh, got sick and the other one didn't. So you can never say that germ theory works because they're both exposed to the same germs. Who had the healthier nervous system is the one who didn't get sick. So that's what we want to make sure that we never uh, 
base our health on the germ theory because the germ theory is it's good to try to avoid germs, but you're never going to avoid them all, particularly this coronavirus. We have to have a strong immune system, all right? And the immune, there's also things that suppress the immune system, and those are the stressors, and the stressors are the physical stress, the chemical stress, and the emotional stress. Uh, and so you could be going through a lot of stress right now just because a lot of us have lost our jobs. We're going through all kinds of stress. Um, but when you have any type of stress, that causes muscle tension. Muscle tension causes imbalances to the muscles that connect back to the spine, which then causes subluxation. The subluxation then causes another physical stress, all right? And then that puts pressure on the brainstem, which then weakens the immune system. And now you have a perfect storm for sickness and disease to develop because you don't have the ability to fight that infection or that sickness, okay? So stresses uh, will cause that. And the more stress you're under, the more checkups you need to get, all right? And because stress always causes subluxation. The ongoing stress will depress the immune system and make us more susceptible to chronic infections as well. So stress is a killer and it causes a lot of problems. The other thing is the gut factor. 80% of our immune cells live in the gut. And so we need to make sure our gut has good bacteria. The good bacteria allows our body to digest food. It allows us to absorb the minerals and all the vitamins that we're consuming. So if you've assaulted your gut with previous antibiotics or processed food or sugary foods, then you're now feeding the bad bacteria. And when the bad bacteria outweigh the good bacteria, it sets us up for sickness and disease as well. So we need a healthy gut. And we want to make sure our gut has the good bacteria. Uh, avoid antibiotics at all cost, okay? Avoid sugar, process, particularly this time of year, avoid sugar and processed food because that's going to weaken your immune system even more. And we also want to be alkaline. We know that viruses particularly love to be in an acidic uh, environment where the pH is uh, below 7.3. So when we have a pH that's higher, 7.3 or above, it's very difficult for viruses and bacteria to live in our gut and in our bodies. So to, to be healthy, to prepare our immune system, we need to make sure we have a really good high 7.5 pH around that area is really good, okay? Now, you can buy these little testers at any drugstore, put it under your tongue, and it should tell you what your pH is. If your pH is alkaline, it's going to be nice and green. If it's acidic, it's going to be yellow. You want to make sure it's green, all right? And if you're, if you're in a position where you just don't like a lot of healthy foods, because all your healthy foods are alkaline, by the way, then get the greens first. Um, I'm in a position where most of my water, I get in a well water, and it's already acidic when I get it. So I have to take greens first just to make sure my pH stays alkaline because I'm drinking so much water and it's coming from an acidic source. All right, so always test your water, make sure it's alkaline as well. Your diseases, including cancers and your inflammatory diseases, love uh, pH that is acidic, okay? Now, foods that uh, aid and detoxify your gut, we need to make sure, especially this time of year, we're adding broccoli and kale. Some of us don't like broccoli and kale. The Greens First supplement we have already has that in it. Um, but broccoli and kale is a great food for you. And we want to eat, we talked about in our nutrition class, just eating 75% off the vine. During this particular time, we want to increase that to 100%. So all the food that God made in its natural state, you know, you should be eating. I try to eat a salad every day, all right? I try to make sure that my meat it's coming from a natural source. It's not been processed. It's not been grass-fed with genetically modified corn, okay? So I'm making sure that I'm eating wild sockeye salmon. I'm making sure grass-fed beef, free-range chicken eggs and free-range chicken, okay? You want, the, that's gonna make you more healthy and it's also gonna make you more alkaline, okay? So that's gonna help your gut as well. The greens first, we talked about that earlier. Especially, a lot of people don't like kale and broccoli. Well, guess what? Greens first is the best tasting greens that we've ever had. It's sweetened with a natural herb called stevia, which is one of my favorites, and it actually tastes good. Um, the other thing that we want to do for our immune system is we may want to add in some good whey protein. Um, it's also sweetened. It's, it comes from grass-fed cows. It's also sweetened with stevia. Um, it's also good for your immune system, okay? So in the morning, I'll drink a greens first with my protein shake. That is my breakfast. 
and then I'll add in my omega-3s, my extra virgin olive oil, and then my coconut oil. And that's actually my breakfast, okay? Now, next we want to make sure we're getting plenty of vitamin D. Lots of research on vitamin D. We are really low in vitamin D. When you go to your medical doctor and he gives you a blood test for vitamin D3, if you're above 20, you're considered okay because you won't get rickets. But the immune people are saying we want our D3 level in our blood to be between 80 and 100. And most of us, most of our patients have only been in the, in the 30 range. So we're recommending 5,000, unless you've gotten your blood test and you know differently, 5,000 units of D3 every day. But during this stressful time, particularly when we hadn't had uh, any sun all winter, we're recommending that you take that vitamin D3 10,000 units a day with a probiotic. Most vitamin D3s you have out there in the store don't come with a probiotic. Your body's not going to absorb it. Vitamin D3 is a very finicky vitamin. You're going to need to take it with a probiotic. Okay, and some of you guys that are really deficient in vitamin D3, where you have to take more than 10,000 units of it, you're going to need to add in vitamin K2 to help you absorb all that extra uh, D3. If you go out and get sunshine, which is great, do not wear sunscreen. Try to get as much sunshine as you can, but don't put any sunscreen on you. We want 15 minutes a day on the front of you, and then 15 minutes a day on the back of you, full body sun naked every day. Nobody can do that. That's why we're all deficient in vitamin D3, right? Now, also, when it comes to D3, if you shower and you use soap on your arm, you just washed off all the D3 before your body could absorb it. You don't want to put any soap on your skin after you've gotten out in the sun. Wait till the next day. And remember, most of our stink comes under our arms anyway, where they don't get any sun anyway. So wash the places that don't get sun, but the places that do get sun, don't worry about washing that for at least a day or two, okay? Now, so D3, we're going from 5,000 to 10,000, right? This is my favorite D3 right here because it comes with the probiotic already in it. So it's also good for your gut and it, your body is readily absorbing it. And the ones you get in regular stores, you don't absorb it. Now, exercise. Um, we want you to get outside and exercise every day, every day, okay? Um, but right now, it's very particular that we get three day, two to three days a week of high intensity interval training. High intensity interval training cleans out all the toxins uh, because you're breathing really hard and you're sweating really hard because you're bringing your heart rate up to its max. Go to my website, teamcower.com, and look up my high intensity interval training program. But two to three days a week, we're going to do high intensity exercise. The other three days a week, I just want you being outside walking, okay? But two to three days a week, we're going high where your heart rate's going up to its max about three times on that. So high intensity interval training, we're doing eight intervals. Uh, and in each interval, you're resting between each one. On the website, we have the, we have the actual the graph where it shows what your heart rate should be doing at each interval and how it gradually goes up. Okay, so make sure you watch that on exercise. We're going to exercise every day during this time of year. And we also know that we're loaded with toxins. If babies are loaded with toxins, we are loaded with toxins. We have toxic thoughts. We've warmed up food in plastic paper and plastic saran wrap and stored food in plastic storage containers and drink water out of water bottles that were plastic. We've, got, we've taken antibiotics. We've gotten toxins from uh, flu shots and all our immunizations. We've gotten toxins from our environment, from our food, our genetically modified food, food that's not organic, all the vegetables now loaded with toxins. So we've all got toxins. You can't stop those, even toxins from um, uh, cooking food on aluminum pots and pans. I mean, the, the list is huge. So we all need to do at least some type of detox every day. And that's why we want you to exercise every day. But we recommend a, at least a 10 day cleanse to get started. And then a 28 day cleanse twice a year to get the toxins out of our body. Okay. Now we don't recommend this detox right before Corona gets here because you'll be a little weak from the detox itself. That's going to be something you're going to do a little bit later. And this is something we need to do as a natural program to rid ourselves of toxins all the time. The biggest thing we can do for toxic thought is we need to pray more. We need to make sure we realize that, you know, we're all in a stressful situation right now. Every one of us, most of us, a lot of us have lost jobs and everything else. We want to stay positive. We want to make sure, hey, we're going to get through this together as a country. We're going to figure this thing out, okay? And so here's my first step. We're going to get over sickness faster. So this, it, once you uh, feel that you are starting to get a scratchy throat, you're getting a little bit weak, we want you to start this immediately. Number one, you pray for God's strength and healing. 
because he's the ultimate healer anyway, okay? And you want to pray for strength not to do the things that make you worse. What makes you worse? Well, taking a, a pill to make you feel better, a cough suppressant. Uh, you know, when your fever is not very high and you want to take a, a, a ibuprofen or something or aspirin, right? Uh, maybe you want to you want to take an antibiotic. Well, we know antibiotics don't work for a virus, okay? Just pray for God's strength that you don't do things that make you worse. But you pray for His healing. Second thing we do is we get adjusted. And that we know for a fact that when you are run down, your immune system is not working right and your nervous system controls your immune system. So what you want to do is you want to grab right behind your jaw here and you want to touch the top joints in your spine. And it, the Atlas Transverse process, it feels like these top joints right here. This is the back of the head. And you can see this joint sticking out here and here. was well, right behind your jawbone. When this Atlas is out of place, it will weaken your immune system significantly. One of the reasons that chiropractic has such a positive effect on the immune system is because we always check this Atlas on our patients. You can check Atlas yourself. Put your hands right behind your jawbone, you push back in here, and if you feel one a little more sensitive than the other, then you know your atlas is out of alignment, your immune system is gonna be weak. The second thing that happens with your spine is if you've lost your curve in your spine, if you don't have that 60 degree curve in your neck like that, you're gonna stretch the spinal cord and that's gonna pull the brainstem down that foramen magnum that's already too big to fit through. So we wanna make sure we enhance our curve. So we, get your, we always do curve enhancement adjustments in our office. Now, of course, most chiropractors don't do that at all, but we do it. And you're going to help it by practicing good posture, not texting and leaning over like that, but making sure you're doing your neck ups, your traction every day. We're going to double up on your neck ups. We're going to double up on our traction during the stressful time. And we're going to make sure that we sleep on our back with a cervical roll or a condored pillow under our neck and not under our head. Okay. Now, so we enhance our immune system by making sure the nervous system is working properly, all right? And then we make sure that we're getting plenty of rest. We're going to be waking up naturally without the alarm clock. The worst thing you can do is sleep in a warm room watching TV. You'll wake up hot and you'll have terrible thoughts and terrible sleep because the news is always depressing. So make sure the room's like a cave, get deep sleep, all right? And make sure that you're drinking plenty of water, particularly if you have a fever, but we want to make, most of us are dehydrated. We want to drink a lot more water, flushing out toxins. Think about this. You would, you would drink water from a river stream that's flowing fast, right? But you wouldn't drink water from a mud puddle. Our bodies sometimes can become mud puddles to attract viruses and bacteria. When we're constantly flushing things in and out, we create that river of life so that we don't slow our body down enough to create the viruses and bacteria. So drink lots of water, about a half an ounce per pound per day minimum of water. So if you're 200 pounds, that's 100 ounces of water per day. Most of you are not doing that. Next thing you want to make sure you do is you're going to make sure you take supplements. When you start feeling yourself getting weak, Conjuplex, my standard process, has all the essential vitamins that you need for your immune system. You start taking that immediately. x is my favorite antiviral herb. Okay, it's got a lot of stuff in it, the mo and it's the best for the money. We also have another one called Angiographics. It's more expensive, it's more powerful, but you gotta weigh it out and see if it's worth the money. Another one, a new one we just got in is Imatone, uh, Imatone Plus. It just came in. Um, you may wanna check that one out as well. But right now, the best one for the money that everybody should buy is x -Viramin. It's an herb that naturally helps your body kill viruses. I'd only take it if I'm run down, if I feel my throat getting scratchy, I can feel the sickness coming on, start taking it early along with your Conjuplex, okay? And then we also, if you feel your throat getting uh, sore and scratchy, go ahead and start taking the herbal throat spray. We've got some of that up front as well uh, to help, and that's loaded with echinacea and other natural anti-inflammatories to help your body fight the infection as well. We can, if your sinus cavities are clogged up, use a saline solution or maybe one of those neti pots, okay? Also, we're going to want to avoid sugar. Sugar is a known toxin to the body, weakens the immune system, uh, dairy, alcohol, other processed foods. When we're sick and run down, we're going to make sure we eat 100% close to the vine, particularly during this stressful time, okay? Now, warning signs that you may be subluxated. Headache is on the same nerve as the immune system. If you have a headache, you better get checked immediately, 
okay? Get your adjustment. Blood pressure is on the same nerve as your immune system. Uh, depression, same nerve as the immune system. Numbness and tingling is a lower neck, cytokine is a lower back, neck pain, dizziness, acid reflux, food intolerances, allergies, asthma, ear infections, all these frequent colds, constipation, these are all signs that you may have subluxation. If you have any of those signs, don't wait to your next appointment. Call us and get you in earlier, okay? Now, most people judge their health by how they feel. We can never make that mistake because the sensory portion of the nerves at the bottom. They go, I don't need to see the chiropractor. My back feels great. No, you're not here for your back. You're here for your immune system. So when you're pinching 80% of the nerve, you don't even feel it. Everybody gets this confused. And the biggest thing we do is we pinch more than 80% and then we lean away with poor posture. Why are so many people in the older category not making it as much as the younger people? Because most of them have a lot more structural problems. Their posture's worse. The worse your posture, you're stretching the spinal cord, you're weakening your immune system, okay? So we wanna make sure we all have healthy spine and nervous system to fight this coronavirus. And here's what we take all our patients through. Remember this. All sickness and disease can only come from two things. Deficiencies are toxicities. Number one deficiency, decreased nerve flow coming from subluxations that we don't even feel, that we've adapted to with poor posture. The second thing is we have a lack of prayer and meditation. One of the things that this is teaching us as a country is we need to get on our knees more. We all need to pray more. We're in a crisis right now. Praying is the best way to help ourselves as well as our country. And then next thing we need to do is make sure that we avoid the toxins. The number one toxins right now are coming from our side effects of our medications. It's unfortunate, but it's true. And then our diet, our negative thoughts, and then environmental toxins. So we take our patients through the six steps. We start our day, 15 minutes a day of prayer, meditation, Bible study, or whatever your choice is there. Then we make sure we get our adjustments weekly. We do our neck ups and traction daily. Neck ups and traction hold the adjustment. Guess what? If you're not getting adjusted, then neck ups and traction don't hold anything, okay? So a lot of times, you know, we're, we're kind of scared to get adjusted. What we've done in our office is we've spread out our adjusting times so that you can come when there's no one else here. We sanitize after, after and before each patient so you're gonna be safe here. Um, don't worry about that. And when your immune system is compromised because of subluxation and you stay home, you're a sitting duck because it's gonna come at some point, unfortunately. And remember the test I gave you. If you feel one side's more tender than the other, right behind your jawbone, you need to come in, okay? Now, a lot of people don't understand this. I've got some older patients whose children won't let them come in. Show them this video. Let them see that this is not about back pain. This is about taking the pressure off your nervous system, enhancing your immune system, so you have your 100% potential best of fighting anything, okay? We don't treat people for corona. We don't treat people for cancer. We don't treat people for any particular disease, but we do enhance your immune system by taking the pressure off the spinal cord, which gives you the best fighting chance to get through this together as a team, okay? So our adjustments are gonna be done weekly until our x-ray is corrected. We're gonna eat 75% close to the vine, but during this corona time, we've changed that to 100% exercise. We're gonna keep that uh, the same Rest, uh, making sure we're waking up naturally without the alarm clock. And then we talked about doing our chemical detox uh, two times a year, okay? So um, biggest thing I want to make sure is I want to thank everybody for taking the time for listening to me on this. I want this email and this, uh, this video forward it to your loved ones. They don't know what you guys have learned, okay? We need to make sure that we're doing everything possible from, from gut health, detoxification, making sure we're taking the right supplements, eating the right foods, doing the right type of exercise. And we really should be doing this for the rest of our life. But right now, it's critical that we get it done. And I just want to thank you guys for listening and make sure that we get all our loved ones checked. If you guys need me to come speak at your, your company, your civic group, your church, we're available. But I want to thank you for this time. Thank you again, and I hope to see you soon.